He said, I had these random pains and these random things, but I couldn't explain it, he tells me. Yeah, he had no voice. He oh. couldn't talk anymore. Yeah. No wonder why. Now, first of all, there's a couple souls that are here that are on the other side. Now, first of all, did your father pass? Yes. He's here when I'm connecting because right away he was rushing forward to the front of the line. And he says, Matt, I have to talk to her. I have to talk to her. And first of all, when I connect with this man, he's showing me that he had problems in multiple parts of his body here in this world when I'm connecting with him. And your dad says to me, Matt, he says, I want to let my daughter know. He says that I am now fine on the other side because he knows how worried about him you were here in this world because there were always different issues and different health struggles that he was going through. Do you understand that? Yes. He also tells me that at the end, these health struggles started to affect his head as well. Because he keeps telling to me, my head, my head, my head. But he says, for the first time, he says, I can speak to her so clearly without pain, without frustration, without anger, without all of these things. And he also tells me that his family is so upset with the way that he died here in this world. He says to me when I'm connecting that there was an issue where you felt like the doctors weren't taking things seriously or that they weren't understanding what was going on with your dad. My dad had ALS. He passed from that, but he didn't, um, they couldn't figure out what it was for the longest time. So they kind of used him as a guinea pig. So I got pretty upset with that. That would be why, listen, your loved ones know the things that you're holding on to, the things that are causing you pain, the things that are causing you hurt, the things that are causing you grief. And your dad is saying to me, Matt, I don't want my daughter to think of me like this anymore. Because I see that there were times when you were pleading with doctors, when you were pleading with nurses, when you were saying something is wrong. And your dad showed me what I'm connecting. Like, you know, when you go and like they send you home, like with the papers that you have to follow and like give <laughs> this medication at this time, do this at this time. Like he shows me like, you getting sent home with all these papers and your dad was on a slew of medications when I'm connecting because he tells me they were always like changing his medications or the things that he was on. Yes. And he says to me, Matt, please know that my family did everything to keep me alive. But there's one thing that your dad wishes. He says to me, Matt, I wish that I could have helped them out in some way because your dad didn't really know what was going on with him, he's telling me. He said, I had these random pains and these random things, but I couldn't explain it, he tells me. Yeah, he had no voice. He couldn't oh. talk anymore. Yeah. No wonder why. Because he's saying to me, I was in pain, but I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. And he said to me that that's the reason why the doctors were always looking in the wrong places. Like they'd look in one place and they'd be in somewhere else. And he's acknowledging that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He goes, my family did everything for me. He's also telling me at one point he had to have a tube. There's a tube that's here. So a he feeding have tube. A feeding yeah. tube. There you go. So please know that your dad's acknowledging this for one reason. He says, Matt. I was kept alive solely by my family, he tells me. Your dad's telling me when I'm connecting, like, I feel like you were his nurse here in this world. Like, the things that I'm seeing you guys doing would be things like a nurse would do here in the U.S. Yeah, I took care of him. I mean, I'm seeing you, more than two, I see you with papers, like medical papers, like going through, like with the feeding, with, with like, he showed me like you cleaning the feeding tubes, like you doing all these random things that like a nurse would do. Your father showed me when I'm connecting, Matt, he goes, if I, he goes, I, had to watch my daughter every single day do all these things. And he showed me literally it was 24 hours for you. And your father said to me that the moment that he got to the other side, he says, I realized all the stress that you were under because I literally see that you were fine in front of your dad. You did what you had to do. But I said that there were times when you went into the other room and said, I can't do this anymore. I can't watch my dad go through this. And I see you crying and being so upset because you felt like your dad was dying in front of you and there was nothing you could do. Your dad said to me, Matt, please let her know that she's all that I needed. Because of her being by my side, I never had a bad day. Even though you watched him suffer here in this world, he said to me, I felt such a close bond and so much love from my daughter. And he's acknowledging that. That's great. He tells me he wants to thank you for the way that you gave up your life for him at the end. Because your father goes like this. He says, Matt, do you know she still feels guilty over my passing? She still feels like she could have done more. And your father's like, how could you have done more? He goes, she gave up her life, Matt. She, the moment that your dad got sick, you dropped everything because he's showing me that. And I see like, you hadn't even seen your friends. You even, you hadn't seen people. Like you didn't even have time to answer the phones. Like I see you telling people, I gotta be there with my dad. Sorry, I can't leave the house. He shows me that you wouldn't even leave the house for five minutes to run an errand because you were afraid of leaving your father. Yeah, it wasn't safe. He, it wasn't safe for him. There was, he needed around the clock help. And you were that person to him. That's what your dad wants to remind you of. Because he said to me, Matt, it's not fear what my daughter had to see. If she could see me now, he said she would see me being able to walk, being able to move, being able to sing, being able to do all these things. Tell my daughter one thing. And you know what's funny? Your dad's spilling the tea on you. He goes, Matt, you know, 
my daughter almost wasn't going to come here. She wasn't going to be part of this online reading, he tells me. <laughs> he tells me this makes you uncomfortable, like being here with all these people and like talking like this. But you said, yeah. I don't care. I'm going to do it because if I have the opportunity to talk with my father, if he comes through, it'll all be worth it. I don't care if there are people here or not. Is that true? Absolutely. But please know it's his way of, of validating that to you and saying that, listen, you were here for me and I'm here for you. So everything that you do within life, your dad's saying, I am still a part of, I am still there. And he's acknowledging that. Your dad wants to let you know one thing. He says, you never disappointed me as a daughter. Oh, that's nice. He says, so please know that I lived as long as I did for you. And I am watching over you every single day. All right, I'm going to leave you with that.